Um, uh, call the meeting to order. And it's 102. And I'm going to read the script. <clears throat> Okay. Um, as a preliminary matter, this is Nikki Rowland, Chair of um, the Historic Structures Advisory Board. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons who participate in the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Lucy. Yes. Angus. Here. And staff, Polly. Present. She's here too. Thank you. Um, so this open meeting of the HSAB is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order March 12, 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the, current, to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advising and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of the public bodies are allowed to encourage to participate remotely. The order which we can find posted in the agenda materials for this meeting allows public bodies to, to meet entirely remotely as long as reasonable public access is supported so the public can follow along the, the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless the participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public, public comment. For this meeting of the HSAB is convening by video conference by Zoom app is posted on the town's website identifying how the public may join in. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and all attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and to take care not to share your screen. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided to members of the body are available on the town meeting's website, unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posting agenda, unless I note otherwise. <clears throat> now turning to the first agenda item, before we do so, for me to cover some ground rules. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, until get on the line of members, inviting you to provide any comment, questions, or motions, please hold, you, hold until your name is called. Also remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly to help generate a good minute. Um, any, for any response, please wait for the chair to yield the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in a conversation with other members, please do so through the chair. Take care to identify yourself. <clears throat> After members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment to those members of the public that have joined the meeting via Zoom. Members of the public who wish to speak must state their names and be acknowledged by the chair and speak through the chair. And each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call votes. So, Madam President, adoption of the agenda. Do I have a motion to adopt the agenda? Mr. Chair, yes. before you make a motion, I'm sorry. Sure. I do have two changes um, to the agenda. So all of seven new street uh, workshop ABD asked for us to, to not review those at this time. They'll be, they got some changes they want to do before they submit to you all for review. And then I believe, um, and I think I, just, I think Matt just came in, but I thought he wanted uh, 14A Lowell Place also to be not reviewed today. So those are the changes. So that would be striking off number 11, 14, 15, and 16 to be um, reviewed at another date. Okay. 11 was already stricken, so that's, yeah. that's good. Um, all right, thank you. I see Brooke is here. Hi, Brooke. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Well, thank you. So, um, Lucy made a motion to adopt the agenda as your second. So moved. Second. All those in favor, Lucy? Aye. Brooke? Aye. Angus? Aye. And I'm in favor. Aye. So, no minutes to approve, no public comment. We'll move on to number one, which is 8 East Dover Street. Can I ask, are we ever supposed to have minutes or they just put that in there? We, um, you know, that's a good question. You know, we, my, our comments that we submit to Holly, I think are kind of like minutes. Um, 
Oh, okay. It's, just it's, a, it's unfortunately with how many applications we receive, it's, it's extremely difficult and time consuming. And um, it's my fault, but um, I, no, I, I agree. I agree with Mickey though, that that is extremely helpful and that goes in with the um, applications. Oh, I totally agree with you. I was just wondering why it was always asked and I've never seen minutes. I mean, it's, it's, kind of it's like, we don't need it. We, we've, we've got to the point where it's just, yeah. Hopefully, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. I, and quite frankly, I also do think that the we, we are meeting open meeting law um, from having posted meetings. We're, we're also, um, you know, got these videos, which is very helpful from a minute's perspective. So, yeah, they're not needed. Okay, sorry. Thank you. Okay. So, East Over. Um, as usual, I have I've put together a list of comments and concerns, um, but I'm going to in this case say ask anybody if they have any concerns with the East Dover application as written. Brooke, it's one minor one. Um, I think that the uh, the apron could either be an extension of the brick sidewalk, like the ones across the street, or uh, cobble. But I don't know that Belgian block is appropriate uh, in this area just because it's. Mm -hmm. Uh, more modern uh, treatment for aprons. So that's my only concern. Okay. I totally agree. I was going to say that if you didn't. So anybody else? I, th I totally agree. Yeah. All right. And, and I will also add that thank you to the homeowner for changing the sidewalk to brick from yes, concrete. Thank <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Okay, so I have changed uh, apron to brick to match the sidewalk. Mickey, I, I just want to echo everyone else's feelings. It, from the photos that were provided, it looks like anything that is not the street or the driveway is brick. So yeah. it makes sense for the you apron know, and the sidewalk to be brick. When you go on street view and look at the neighbors just to the right of this picture, it's actually like a large cobblestone. Um, but I think that, that actually kind of confuses the Belgian block thing too. So I'm, I, I like Brooke's comment build or uh, cobblestone or brick, but I think brick is, is the better choice. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> let's leave it with that. Okay, so next is the deck. Deck replacements. Lucy, go ahead. Um, replacing the decking, I'm fine with that. Um, replacing the railing, I... I if I would prefer that they stick with the original um, railing and its lower height. I think it's more appropriate with the um, size house. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think if they change that up to whatever the 36 inch or something like that, that they will never be able to go back to the lower um, level height. Um, walking around town yesterday, I noticed that there are quite a few of these lower railings. And I think with the diminutive size of this house, it's adorable, it's cute, and they're doing a nice job. I would recommend that they stay with the lower height. I'm not seeing as mentioned of the height of the railing. Is that in the application maybe? No. Um... But no, isn't there... Lucy's concerned that if they take it down, the code's going to require it to be raised. However, it's not 30 inches off the ground, so it won't be required to be raised. Yes. Okay. And as far as the, um, the, the look, the appearance of it, um, if it, it was cap to cap like that, then I'd say keep it the way it is. But that to me doesn't look like an original stoop. Um, that looks to me like something that was done in the 60s or 70s and was maintained that way. Um, I think post to post uh, or uh, you know, running the railings between the posts is perfectly appropriate uh, as well. Um, I, I, I agree. Um, I'm not, so what I can put in the comments is to um, no concerns, but keep the railing low. Just so they're not tempted to make it a 36 inch railing. Yeah, that, that railing looks like it is, let's see, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. It's 30 inches at, uh, at most. Yeah. Okay. I'll keep low at about 30 inches. Let's recover it. 
Okay. Next. Nine really. Hello. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Packet's fairly sizable. If you go to the front elevation, it'll make it a lot quicker. Page, what page is that? Uh, probably the fourth page. Linda, you're proposing to take the, essentially replace the shingles on the dormer, remove with, the with natural to weather shingles. And the dormer's not original to the structure, there are aerials of it, but I just take right. the white off the shingles, take the shutters off the dormer, which didn't used to exist. And then, um, there's two windows on the left. You've already got a like kind replacement of the rest of the windows. There are two windows way in the back on the left where there's a picture of them that we wanted to make shorter. Um, six over six is to get over a counter back there. Nobody's done, I don't know what happened to this structure, but nobody's done anything to it for at least 30 years. Oh, it's goodness. just, it was just terrible inside. It's disintegrating. It's just um, broken, windows are broken. I don't know what's happened over here. Um, does anybody have any comments about what Linda's proposing? Yeah, I was going to ask what the uh, age of the windows were, uh, um, if they were original to the house. I don't think so, because the house is a lot older than these windows, and there's some Brascos in there. There's some old um, weight and balances, but a lot of the glass is new. You know, it's regular glass. Every once in a while, I'll find an old piece of glass, and we're going to keep those. But in general, they're all over the place. The dormer windows are clearly not original because the dormer didn't exist for a long right. time. Right. No, so. I'm talking the front windows looked to me like they were old. If we can protect, we can get them. We'll keep them. But a lot of the glass in the front windows isn't old glass either. It's it's weird. It's like one out of twelve. I'm talking about the windows themselves, not the glass. Yeah. I mean, if we can save them, we will because I think that's preferable. But we've already got a like kind replacement with True Divided Lights uh, Boston Sash. But these two windows that we want, I don't know where that, Holly, can you get the thing up on the screen? For what? For the pictures that I put in. Oh, oh, you guys can't see that right now? Sorry. No, we see the list. No. Oy. We see the town list. Uh, all right, hold on. It was Sorry, there. Does anybody else have it. any comments about this one? See it there, there now? Yeah. I do. Yeah. Um, if you go down, I'll show you the two windows that we wanted to make shorter. They're down, down, down. Oh, you're talking about in the back, right? Yeah. Yeah, they're right here. Yeah, they are. They're the two windows way in the back. We wanted to make them just shorter six over sixes. That was a kitchen addition at some point. And the dormers were added at some point. Okay. Chair, it's uh, Angus. I, I have a few comments. Go ahead, Angus. Um, all the photos that have been provided, and thank you for that. Um, the oldest historic photos show the shutters on the lower part, even when there wasn't a dormer at the upper part. Yes. Um, keep the, 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 uh, the, it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's not what we'd normally see is to have painted shingles. So I understand going natural with the dormer, but I think that it's important to, to um, stick with the shutter um, since that's what was on the facade and it kind of makes sense to, to stick with it. Um, as far as the windows on the side, um, I would much rather see the original uh, windows stay there and end up with a window situation where the where whatever kitchen cabinetry is is just built in front of it. But um, it won't. It, I mean, if anything, it would enhance the view from the inside and it would maintain the historic fabric on the outside. That's all. Thanks, Angus. Um, anybody else? Um, I agree with Angus. Yep. I agree with Angus. I, I think agree it can be too. a window think, pretty easily. I think the, to, more importantly to me, I guess it's all important, I guess, but I think those shutters, you know, make the, um, it gives some character to the, to the upper dormer. And I think without them, it would really look plain and, and sort of bulky without the shutters. So yeah. I think. Yeah, the think shutters really need to stay. Yeah. On the dormer? Yeah. On the dormer. 
It's unusual in town to have dormers with shutters. It is, shutters. But it's part of the charm. Except that they're not original to the structure. It's it's an unusual dormer. So yeah. I think I think it's um I think they should stay. All right, just or so you can you know, take the dormer off. We're going to take the ones off on the first floor. That's definitely part of this house for sure. Right. Yeah, you're missing one upstairs. So you might maybe. Yeah, it did left and went somewhere with the wind. <laughs> okay. Any other comments about this one? But you're okay with me taking the paint off that second floor, right? I think so. Uh, are they going to paint the front door? The door is going to Essex Green to match the color of the shutters. Okay. That's a good thing. All right. Thanks, Linda. Actually, I'm missing two shutters up there. Huh. Well, it's it's not that you're missing them. It's that they are not there deliberately. No, they were there. You can see the brackets. It's just well, it's so symmetrical. Yeah. It's weird. It's, they're a symmetrical loss. I think I'd like to see the shutters replaced. With yeah. so just fix them, put them back. Yeah. yeah, it's just such a part of that building. Yeah, they would be missed. I think so. I mean, honestly, I'd like to see the shingles painted too, but I don't oh, think that's just... worth. I'm not going to stand on that one, but I really yeah. think the the shutters should be there. Okay. Just because the dormer goes completely from one side to the other, it's not meeting regular guidelines. And part of what makes it work is that it's tied in with the lower um, white section. So um, I, I think it's totally justifiable to, to have the shingles be painted. But um, as, as Brooke says, I, I'm not going to stand on it, but, <laughs> but uh, that's part of what pulls this whole facade together. Not original to the structure. I'll just say that again. That's right. I agree on all counts. So, um, just, just an added layer. That's all it is. <laughs> yeah. We good on this one? Yep. Yep. Linda? Yep. Three Pleasant Street. This is my project, but I have no idea who put it in or what it is. I have a I have suspicion what it is. I'll have to see the the uh, the drawing. Are, are you representing it? I'm gonna have to. I just mm -hmm. talked to the guy who uh, was running the project, and he had no idea it was in here either. I can't comment on that. No idea. So if you want to enlarge it, I can tell you what's happening back here. That that shed that you guys didn't like before with the pergola on it and the weird roof, we they got rid of it and they're just moving the existing shed over there. Um, I think there's no fence in the back. There's fences on the north side and the south side. And I believe they want to put a fence across the back um, to tie into the two freestanding fences on north and south. I think that's one part of this. Um, Holly, do you want to go back up again so I can see the larger plan? And if, can you enlarge that somewhat? Yep. Go up a little bit so I can see what's going on. Yeah, we'll place the, do the rear fence. Uh, with a regular pattern, Goshen stone. Most of that, what you see that he's got on here is not visible. I think they want to put a granite curb up there on the brick pad, uh, driveway that's not changing to keep people from like rolling over the cliff because it drops a good four to six feet down to the grade level behind it. So you can't see any of it anyway, because it's down so far and changing grade because they, um, they elevated the parking space decades ago. Um, and I think that's why they want to put a bumper up there to keep people from going through it. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. Um, Holly, oh. there's a photograph that I sent you this morning. I believe, yes, there are a couple of them. Lucy, how visible do you think this is? Well, from Pleasant Street, that deck is extremely visible. Um, I, I think it was a mistake that would, that got approved. Well, none uh, of the screening is back Linda, up. Linda, I'm speaking, please. Um, and mm -hmm. then to the right hand side of this photograph, you can see that there is a huge drop. Um, Holly, can you screen down? I think roll down to. Mm -hmm. Nope, that's the deck. Um, 
Oh, sorry, I must have got the wrong photo there. <laughs> there, you can see, you, you can, that's to the right side. That's very built up just to the right. Yeah, you can see that. That I think is at least two courses of cinder block. Yep, and that's wrong too. So they're proposing to put a fence in the head in front of the, right? Yeah, there's fencing, there's planting, there's it. This is this is not what we uh, told him to do. I this is the first time I'm saying this now. We're going to have to have a conversation on uh, site because this is not what he was told to do, and this is not what the plan said. But be that as it may, right now behind that piece of equipment, they want to put a matching fence across the back. Um, this was supposed to drop down behind the parking because the parking, you know, the brick part is elevated. Um, and it was supposed to drop down to the yard and then it was supposed to go back. So I believe all the plantings going back, there is a gate and a fence. I just, it's nothing, nothing is obviously finished here. He's been, Marty's just been running amok here. So I'm gonna have to have a conversation on site. What disturbs me about this is that conceivably in the future, the, at the end of the what is billed as the existing parking lot with a parking area with a hedge. Conceivably in the future, um, someone could take out that hedge and then have stacked parking from here all the way up beyond the um, railing of the decking. Yeah, this is weird looking. It's not I supposed to be that way. That this has got to be completely rethought. I mean, yeah. I agree. I'll have that conversation on site because this is not what it's supposed to look like. But in any case, the HDC is is, um, and we're not putting back we're not putting back privet. The HDC can say that the screening has to be planted and maintained, and it has to be year round vegetation. And he's been told that a hundred times. Um, Linda, we had this conversation about year round maintaining and you know future buyers last week. So I'm, I'm that I find personally find that um, sort of a, a weak explanation. I, I don't understand quite this, this Goshen stone, this plot yeah. there. And uh, well, anyway, anybody else have comments? Well, I do. Go ahead, Brooke. Um, I, I do think that having that lawn raised up to the level of the parking, which it appears to be from the photos, um, is problematic. Um, I, I really do think that uh, if it was approved at a different elevation, um, then the driveway that it should be built that way. Uh, and if it means adding an extra riser or two to the deck, which is plenty big, uh, and can absorb a few stairs, then I think that it should uh, it should be dropped down into the yard. Um, I don't think that we should be treated to um, review of the of the patio. Absolutely. So that's my concern. When I look at the photograph that you had up earlier, Holly, it showed two steps, three risers, two steps. I think it's three risers, yeah. Now, well, this, the drawing on, the drawing shows four, one, two, three, four risers. Go down to the other, is there another photograph? I think there's one from the side. Yeah, look at, stand that one a little bit. I have no idea what's happened here. This is insane. Yeah, see, there's two, there's only two steps there, two treads. So it looks like the whole thing was designed to be at least one step down further. Absolutely. Bring it down better at grade. Yeah. I don't know what's happened here. I, I this raised lawn stuff is I, not the way we want to go in the future. Right. And I don't really understand the Goshen stone layout if, if they're really proposing the way it's drawn. It's, uh, it looks strange to me, the yard and the stone sort of tooth that way. Well, I just texted the project manager and told him to stop <laughs> everything. Okay, good. All right, so we're going to wait for revisions on this one. Um, hopefully. hopefully. Yeah. yeah, that's not, I'm going to pull it from tomorrow night, I can tell you that. 
Um, Holly, could you have my photograph please included for tomorrow okay. night? Yeah. Thank you. And can somebody send me the ones that you took, Lucy? Holly, somebody send me those photographs and I'll send them off to the project manager. Yep, I'll send them to you. Linda. One of them, I'm sorry, I included by mistake. I don't know what it is. That looks like it's down on Brand Point somewhere. Oh, it could be. Okay. Let's move on. Ooh, chills. <laughs> um, 10 North Water. Demo team. Anybody have any real concerns with this one? Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah. Um, if Holly pulls up a photograph that I sent her this morning, um, the chimney's already gone. Mm. And my, if you all remember, we had that project up at Four Howard Court about a few months ago and the chimney was gone. It's the same group. So this is the second chimney that they have taken out prior to any discussion or approval, which I, I have a problem with. And this is a group that should know better. I'm actually with you, Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I, I almost say, you know what, to stop this behavior, rebuild it. So we're not in favor of removing the chimney. I'm actually here, Mr. Chair. I'm at. I'm glad you all find this so entertaining. Uh, let me start by apologizing. I didn't realize that they demoed the chimney. Um, that is unacceptable. They should never do work prior to the approval process. We were not aware of it. And quite frankly, I don't appreciate the, the dispersion as if this is like a group or I'm part of the group or, or, or however you, you know, describe it. This is clearly an example of a contractor getting ahead of himself. I don't, I don't condone it. I think it's wrong. And I fully support whatever your position is on this. Regarding the Howard Court project, that chimney was, if, as I recall, was not an original chimney. We actually asked to not build it. It was something that the HDC had requested. It was not an original chimney structure. The HDC wanted us to include a new chimney. Uh, and when they built the structure, they elected to not build it. But if the, if the HDC felt compelled that it was critically important, they would have built it. So again, that's not a, you know, the way you described that, uh, Lucy, was as if we demoed a historic chimney prior to this. And that's just not the case. So I just want to be clear about that. Thanks, ma'am. Um, so back to the subject of whether or not we would like to see this chimney remain. Um, it's sounding like there's a little bit of a consensus that the answer is yes. Am I, is that correct? Yes. That is correct. Okay. Okay. Got it. Is that the only thing on the application? Lisa. Uh, yes, this, yes, Mr. Chair, that was it. Okay, all right. Thank you, Matt. I think we're, yep. we're good with that one. Yep. Um, Thank you. Yep. Next one is 25 North Water. Date, Benson yeah. date, I think. So, any thoughts, Lucy? Yes, I went down there and looked. Um, it, it, it appears that they just want to have the single gate on the left-hand side of the house. Um, and the uh, fence elevation illustration shows the gate with fencing panels. Um, 
I, I think that the, the height of the gate, if it's going to be uh, standalone visibly from the street, I think is too high. Okay. And um, is it natural to weather? Do they say what they're doing with the colored? I think they it's say- It's noted as natural. Yeah, no, okay. The fence is natural. And I, does that, when you say fence, does that include gate? Yes. Okay. Um, anybody else feel the gate is too high? Brooke? Um, so it's tucked right uh, in the back left corner. Well, there's two, I think there's two gates, right? One yeah. The right. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, My concern is, is that um, six feet is already, I mean, it's a, a, a tolerable height, um, but the, the arch above that with the boards going all the way up, I think accentuates its verticality. Uh, I would rather see that, um, be more of a continuation of the five and one. It's not five and one, but but that kind of thing. Four and a half and one and a half. Um, uh, and the same with the side gate, where there's no room for there to be flanking on either side of an arched gate. It's not clear what's going on in the side gate. If that's supposed to match the other one, probably sure. you didn't say otherwise. Right. Um, I I'm not concerned that concern about the height of this thing because it's so far back into the property and it tapers if the view is not quite as visible i don't believe um there's plantings around it um what do you think i think it's just the upper part being boarded if that were lattice starting from the same height as the rest of the lattice in the door it would help so you want to see modifications to the gate to have the board not not go and make it match the, the fence. My only comment initially, and I, I think I'll, I'll add that comment about the height, um, is that you know if this is that diamond lattice, and I guess they have it next door, but generally, you know, we tend to prefer the square lattice as opposed to diamond. Does anybody else care about that? No, no. no. Okay. I, I thought about that, Mickey, but um, you know that the fads come and go. I think it's <laughs> classier to do the horizontal and vertical versus the diamond, but but yeah. they're kind of interchangeable. I, yeah, I don't. I don't need to do that. All right, so we're saying the gate um, a little high. Um, no solid boards above the. Yeah, I, I really don't mind the higher gate on the right-hand side of the house when there's fencing on either side. It just seemed to me a, a bit um, tall and massive for the left-hand side. I don't, you know, look at that picture right there. I think that's the view down the left side of the building. I just don't think you're going to see much of this. No, you won't really. So, so at the moment, I have. No solid board above. <clears throat> How about match board height to the fence? Is that what we're trying to say? Yeah, I mean, I think no, no arch, and it could be board or it could be lattice above. Thirty-six feet tall. Okay. All right. I think we got that more. Okay. Next. <clears throat> Five meters. Move on. <clears throat> the building across the street. Mickey, I've got comments. I'm happy to start. 
Go ahead. Anyways. My main concern is the that there really aren't any drawings that are accompanying this, that they're marked up photos. Mm -hmm. I, I'd rather see a, a more complete application so that we can really know what we're talking about. There's a certain amount that is left to guess. Uh, there are parts of this building that are getting removed and you're not seeing what's replacing it. Um, and the, the directions, it's getting moved in a way that before it was facing the water um, and, and now it's facing a different or facing the street. And um, I, I feel like the, the application is incomplete to really um, have a discussion about. That's exactly what I was gonna say. We need actual drawings of this one because it's the building is changing. We don't even know it's replacing the parts yeah. that are removing. So um, I'm recusing from this because I'm handling the drawings. <laughs> oh, where are they? Yeah. yeah, I'm working on. Yeah, them. incomplete application. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, th this this was uh, an eleventh hour request, and I said, "Well, I, you know, it's going to be done as soon as I can do it." Okay. All right. So we'll we'll defer this until later because obviously it's just incomplete. Yeah. Mickey, yeah. I did um, send Holly a photograph this morning of the new location, Five Meter Street. Mm -hmm. from the street, if anybody wants to look at that. I wasn't sure how it was going to fit in there. Let's, let's take this up, hopefully, next time that they bring okay. the full application. Mm, to Holbert, <clears throat> granite curb. Mm. So, thoughts, Lucy? Well, I'm down there almost every single morning. And just to refresh everybody's me memory, the granite curbing on Easton Street heading towards the ocean is all along the right-hand side with brick sidewalk up into the Coast Guard Station. The other side of the street does not have any grip granite curbing, as everybody knows, there's parking on that side near the wetlands. And then going down um, Holbert, other than across the street from this place, um, well, across the street from this place, there is granite curbing. It looks old, it sticks up only maybe an inch, and it's a very short segment. The rest of Holbert Avenue has no granite curbing until f way farther down. Um, I think that this curb installation here I, is inappropriate for um, the area. I always think of granite curbing to be uh, an edging to a sidewalk. Yeah, pretty much exactly what I was going to say. Um, it's really the only curbing, and I didn't see that further down Holbert. Um, I, I saw it across the street, and I just don't think this is what we want to see. Is it, you know, it's, we started here, and it could continue around in other places. I don't think we want to get started on this. Yeah, I sort of thought of it. If this would be like putting um, granite curbing on Baxter Road. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's appropriate here. Brooker Angus? I agree. Um, I, I just, I didn't, I don't remember very much uh, curbing uh, on Holbert and it, it, um, it makes it feel more formal and uh, more urban. And, uh, and it does make sense when the sidewalk is, is raised from the street, but, but that's, that has a, a beachy character down there of Im informality of, of grass right down to the street that makes a lot of sense and I would I'd hate to see that changed. Yeah, I also didn't understand why the curbing would go on to the next the neighboring property too. Same uh, same owner, same architect. Oh, okay. So that they were planning on extending this, I guess. Correct. All right, there we go. Okay, sounds like we're not in favor of that one. Good. 
Eleven India, Jack so, Lucy, did you get some photographs of this one? Um, yeah, I do. Um, the photographs I sent Holly this morning um, address the um, iron, iron railing that they want to put on the center street side of the building. They okay. want to change the steps to brick and then put an iron railing. Right, but let's not talk about that yet. Let's oh, okay. The other one for the patio on the back. For the side. Um, well, as I recall, the plan says that the existing planting was going to stay. And I didn't understand. Good, yeah, good evening. I'm here. Sorry, uh, Mirka Eher, and I'm happy to uh, or represent or answer any questions for this. Okay. okay. Uh, well, there, there is a large gray planter box um, near the crafts maker store there. Is that staying? Oh, you know what? I would not, um, I would assume yes, but if you have a other, I, I, I'm sorry, just to quickly uh, explain, this was done for last summer, I guess for, you know, pandemic accommodation, some kind of outside uh, dining space. And it's, I think they tried to create the owner of proprietor, some kind of privacy. So I wasn't part of this extra planting we have there. Now what they ask if they could put the brake instead, instead the gravel, because for the safety reason. And we kind of talk, I ask if the plants and everything staying and they said, yes. So, but if the planter itself, which is just removable and it sits there, it caused any question. I'm pretty sure we can address that too. Well, I guess I was looking for an explanation about that planter and um, some sort of screening of the um, existing transformer. Other than that, I have no problem with the um, replace um, using the brick on the patio. I just, it'd be nice if we didn't have to look at that um, the transformer and I would like to see more cohesiveness of the planting on either side of the um, the uh, brick walkway into the um, patio there. And then, and my other question is right on the corner of the building of the center in, of India Street, there's a little box there that has SPK in it. What does that mean? Okay, little box. That's not a speaker, is it? No, 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 no. Uh, I, I, no, no speakers. I know that's a transformer, but that's, oh, you know, it's a spike. It's a corner board. It's, that's the corner board, uh, okay. concrete bound in the, it's mm -hmm. like a spike. Okay. Oh, so. All right. Okay. Thank you. And if, if, I don't know if I may just quickly just address the uh, screening of the transformer. They have actually uh, built a little wooden uh, fence enclosure, but it just sits on the ground. So it's easily accessible and removable to screen the uh, transformer when it's um, when it's when the, the guests are there but just if you think about it just the wooden it looks like a, a freestanding fence it's a wooden enclosure u-shaped which kind of screen this transformer uh the side facing to india then the side which would face to proprietor and then it's kind of wraps around so so there is a screening of the transformer okay thank you Worker angus no concerns so, uh, yeah, I mean, other than screening the transformer, um, I think it's it'll look great with brick. Yeah, my, my only comments, and they're similar to, to um, Lucy's, is that I think that there's an opportunity here to just run a, maybe run the picket fence, a fence right across the face of the brick patio with a gate in it. Mm -hmm. That'll hide the transformer. It'll intersect with the porch to the left. And because um, it's, it's quite a bit of brick back in there. I don't want to, I don't think we really want to look in and see all that brick if the, if the vegetation isn't solid. So I was just going to suggest a, you know, a, a low picket fence with a gate. I like that idea. Yeah. 
Great idea. Get, get rid of the planter box altogether. Yeah, I mean, we don't know if that's staying or not, but but assuming it isn't because it, it feels sort of temporary there, it might disappear at any moment. So I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, and then to the railing. Um, Holly, I sent two photographs this morning. Wait a minute, um, Lucy. Lucy, just a second. Oh, sorry. Um, that's a, there's an, a separate application, isn't there? Is that? What are we looking at? Can we see that? So are you, I'm sorry, uh, my stuff was, we good with my application, what was the party of at this point? Yeah, because this is just about the patio. Is, there is yeah, there was just a patio. We we were met McEachern. He was there with the railing, I believe. So, uh, or he is there. But I thought it was. I thought it already went through the meeting before a few weeks prior. Oh, okay. Uh, actually, the Mirka. Sorry, this is Matt, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mirka, we just submitted it for this past deadline. So the the removal of the railings is up on this agenda. Is, the, what is, is that 29 something? What is the, um, I'm trying to find that application. Okay, so that's it's labeled 29 Center Street. So we'll get to that um, in a, a couple of applications from now. Oh, okay, sorry. Right, so we're gonna, on the agenda is 7 East Lincoln, Gerard, next, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So we'll do with the garage on East Lincoln and come back to the railing. If uh, it's okay, Holly and Mr. Chair, I could just give you a brief yep. Um, yep. introduction. So uh, it might be helpful to look at the site plan just to see the placement, but. Um, the uh, the main house was approved, um, and uh, so and we, you know, had shown on the site plan that a garage was uh, going in this place, and so uh, this is the garage. Um, it's uh, it's not as high and elevated off the ground as the main house because it doesn't have to be. And we thought that it was important for the garage to be uh, significantly smaller and lower uh, in scale than the main house. Uh, one exterior trim detail, uh, all, all the trim details do match the uh, main dwelling. One thing that we thought would be important or, and again, looking for feedback on this, but we did uh, propose to do the skirting detail that's on the main house at the same height uh, to the re required floodplain elevation. And the reason being is we thought that if we did uh, just wood shingles that uh, with the propensity of flooding that we would get a lot of water staining, et cetera, et cetera. And at least with this detail, um, it would be less visible over time and you know easier to kind of maintain and clean. Um, we did, one thing that we did not put on the application, but I did want to get feedback from uh, Historic Structures Advisory Board in the HDC was the possibility uh, of considering a composite uh, vertical board material for portions of these structures that are located below the floodplain. Again, the thought being that over time, they would be less susceptible to water staining and damage. Again, happy to stick with cedar painted uh, or shingles. Uh, but just wanted to put that out for your consideration. And that, that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Um, I'm going to read what I have written here for this. Um, as an accessory structure, I, I think this is still a little tall for the neighborhood as a secondary building. I'd like to see it come down a little bit. Um, in these in detailed comments, that transom that you're looking in the lower right elevation, the transom over the door, I don't think that's appropriate. All it does is raise up that door hood taller than feels appropriate. Um, and the, the, the you're proposing to paint that skirt matte. I don't I don't mind the skirt. I think it's sort of interesting and it actually helps I think bring the scale of the building down a little bit. But I don't think it's we want to see it painted white. <clears throat> so I was going to suggest that be either painted gray or maybe even go with a natural cedar, mm -hmm. which would um you know, I think that will dry out e easier um, rather than having paint that might bubble and peel. Um, so if it does get flooded, it shouldn't be that big a concern. It's not going to be that that often. Um, so that was those were my only comments. 
Um, anybody else? Mickey, I have comments with Angus. Go ahead. Um, uh, thank you for bringing up the, the doorway. Um, the, uh, everything about this feels vertical. It feels, it feels stretched. Um, mm -hmm. And that doorway sort of is a, a symbol for the rest of the stretching. I, I would rather see the structure be lower, um, maybe four feet lower, uh, whatever would still facilitate the, the use of the upstairs and, um, and being able to use the garage space for, for, um, for parking. But um, it, it, it's, it feels that it's at a height that it's starting to compete with the house and, um, and the house and the, the garage, I feel like are competing with the, um, the rest of the street um, as, as far as overall heights. Um, so I, I like the idea of conservation and adaptability and thinking about the um, material choices for uh, the least amount of waste as far as flooding and, and reworking. And I think your suggestions of a natural um, cedar make sense. And I like the idea of the, um, the, the boarding that sort of pulls things together with the house but it, it just, it feels like a, a guest cottage was just set on top of a garage. It, it just, it feels, it feels like time and a half or two different functions. It just feels uh, too vertical. So I, I would look to, to bring that down uh, as, as much as um, feasible. That's all. Thanks, Angus. I, I, I kind of agree. I just think that most of this, the, when we think of brand point and garages and accessory buildings, they're usually just you know, a, sort of a small one-story garage. And I think this is not that common, something of this height and volume in that neighborhood. So I like your idea of bringing it down probably more than I was thinking, but I think you're right. Um, but, you know, so it's not then story and a half to maybe true dormers rather than flush. So, um, Brooke, Lucy? I'm fine. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. I, I do want to say that, um, like the main house, I, I like the way this building looks. Um, it is it is attractive and uh, um, I'm happy to see these buildings going there. Um, I definitely, I think that you could probably still get your program on the second floor, you know, maybe not exactly the way it is um, if this building was brought down uh, a couple of feet. Um, and as far as um, a skirt board. Uh, I personally think that there's probably a composite out there that would resemble uh, like a gray, uh, a graying cedar, or if you had to paint it white, um, you know, something that would work well there. Um, but that's, you know, uh, I, I feel like there are materials out there that could probably be a good substitute in certain situations. But again, I'm probably in the minority here. So. Um, but as far as height, yeah, I, I agree with that. Thanks. Yeah, as far as the composite, I'd say, you know, why go there if natural cedar does the same thing? You know? Mr. Chair, could I just chime in on that one if uh, I could? And again, we're open to really whatever the whatever your suggestions are. Just I think that with natural cedar, I think that I'm guessing that, it, I mean, I am anticipating that it would actually show water stains if there was say like, uh, you know, if there was a, um, you know, high water level at say, like two feet. I'm just wondering if the natural wood would still show that. Um, again, I like natural trim and think it's a good solution, but the thought was the long-term effects of, of water staining. Uh, at one point, and I know that uh, actually, the, thankfully, I think for everybody, the, the clients weren't in favor of this, but we actually even drew a, um, a stone detail uh, but they actually didn't like that. Um, but again, something like stone obviously wouldn't really show uh, much water uh, water damage. So again, appreciate all the feedback and, and discussing it. Okay. Um, anything else on this one? I think we can move on. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. So back to Center Street. Um, 
Um, I think this is us too. This is, this is the deck with the front stoop and the iron railing. Yes. So you want to talk about this one, Matt? Yeah, certainly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, I think probably the site plan might be helpful or, or the floor plans are fine, I think, too. Uh, yeah, floor plans would probably be a good place to start. So um, so this is in regards to the entrance to uh, the meeting house. Um, and so we've got a one in 20 uh, um, accessible ramp. Uh, and the previous submission, uh, the, the ramp itself was brick, but the landing itself and, and the steps were wood. Uh, and there was, you know, uh, you know, newel posts and exterior newel posts and balusters, plus the required uh, graspable handrails on the front elevation. Uh, and as we looked at it, I just felt like it was becoming really busy in terms of you know, newel posts and balusters. And we're really only going up, I think about 19 inches, um, you know, in terms of elevation. So I felt that a lot of that, uh, you know, architecture, if you will, was unnecessary code wise, just in terms of, you know, we don't need a guardrail because it's only 19 inches and it was just becoming busy on the facade. And so we have done in the past, I suggested uh, and kind of round tabled it with everybody, the, the notion of just going with a wrought iron handrail uh, and, um, you know, masonry landing uh, and steps so that the, you know, so that the ramp and the steps basically kind of feel more part of the, you know, the, the, the landscape, if you will. And then uh, where that uh, hip roof, entry roof is, that that is actually a wood deck. Um, and I think if you scroll to the elevations, you might see, probably didn't need to show you the upper floor plans, right? Um, so if you look, yeah, this is a great shot because you can see the proposal, which is drawing one. And then if you look to the right, uh, the previously approved HTC approval uh, just shows you, you know, the, the the newel posts, vertical balusters. And again, it, it's just a just felt that it was let, it was too busy and unnecessarily so. And this way, we meet all the requirements for um, graspable handrail. Um, and we did actually meet with uh, Mirka um, recently to kind of talk about the uh, the stonework. So it's we're really here to primarily talk about removing the uh, the newel the newel posts. I guess if that's the proper terminology and the balusters, and instead replacing them with the um, the wrought iron handrail um, and converting the previously wood steps to uh, masonry. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. I think I'll leave it there because otherwise I'll keep babbling. Um, you know, I, I get your rationale. I, I think that it's, um, you know, everything you said is probably pretty accurate. My, but I keep coming back to this iron and brick stoop and railing. And, you know, the only buildings in town that I can think of that have that combination are the brick, other brick buildings in town like the JC or the Pacific Bank maybe a couple houses on Upper Main. I just feel mm -hmm. that most wooden structures like this stick to wooden decks and stoops and handrails. And I I see a little bit of a disconnect with that with the ramp to the left, but you know maybe that could also be studied on its own rather than changing the whole package. So it, go ahead. It, well I was just gonna say thank you is um you know the Mirka did a really you know, detailed landscape plan in the areas. Uh, there's basically kind of two pocket planting areas in front of the ramp uh, and the, um, you know, to the left and to the right of the steps. So uh, my thought is that it's going to be, it's going to feel, you know, kind of buried a little bit inside some vegetation, clearly visible, but it's going to, you know, kind of soften that edge. So you can kind of see there, um, you know, the, the railing to the right, uh, which would stay in place because there's, you know, more vertical rise and run. And it kind of ties into some of the other, you know, ramps. Uh, the other part of this, obviously, is we're, we're making um, the accessible route between the meeting house and the uh, Roberts house. And so there is actually a small ramp you can kind of see in this, uh, this elevation as well. So, um, you know, I don't know if it's worth looking at the uh, landscape plan. But anyways, we just thought that it was... I, uh, my, my thought was that it would 
just tend to disappear as opposed to a lot of bulky null posts. But you know, obviously here for a reason. So your, your feedback is welcomed and yeah. appreciated. Okay. Looking back at that um that photo or the um the side view right there, I think. Go back to the railing here. To the left here. Yeah, it looks like we need a small change to that door too. Well, what I'm looking at is right there. Do you not have a railing on the side of the stoop, on the upper stoop? So, you know, it almost looks like you want to continue that railing right through that line, you know? Just yeah, we could. We could certainly do that on the on the right side, yeah. And and the other thing too, also is you know we wanted to get this back in front of the HTC. Mirk and I talked about there is a little bit of overlap here because there's the landscape plan and the steps are you know they're going from wood to masonry, and so we actually have uh, since met on site, and she has some suggestions about the actual materials in terms of like you know brick uh, versus you know there's some granite and some gauche in there. To kind of make it you know cohesive and more integ integrated into the overall plan uh, but we certainly could carry that railing uh, mickey like you're suggesting all the way into that post it just seems like you might want to for safety reasons anyway right now yeah it's again it's i think it's 19 inches and uh that planting bed uh is going to be pretty well planted but we're ha happy to do that yeah there's no reason why we couldn't yeah i'm not i'm not saying that's a priority i'm just commenting that it seems like an open space there um, anybody else have any thoughts on this one? Lucy? I do. Go ahead. Is that Angus? It, it, it's Angus. Um, I, I have to say, I completely agree with Matt's thoughts about the simplicity of this and how it will sort of disappear into the planting. I think there are actually more examples of iron in non-brick structures than, than we really think about. Um, and I think that's just because they they are, they just sort of blend in. I'm actually in the process of um, restoring the, the rails up at the UU meeting house, um, um, and which is, which you, is know, you know, a, a wood, a wood structure. structure. Um, uh, but, but I would like to just say that I think it's, it's a, a, an appropriate... Angus, did we lose you? <laughs> something I got an echo and then it disappeared. Um, I, I just think that it's an appropriate uh, proposal. Uh, I, I like the f philosophy around it and I, I think it'll have a good feeling. That's good. Got it. Brooke or Lucy, Lucy, go ahead. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I have no problem with the iron railing. Holly, can you pull up the two photographs um, that I sent you this morning, please? Okay, Mickey, this is proprietor's next door with a wooden building with us. <laughs> okay, I see it. Okay, now I took this photograph because I like the detail. I like this kind of iron work. The next photograph is the iron work done at the pocket park, which when that was done was not very popular. Mm -hmm. That I don't think is a good look. Mm -hmm. I think when you have a an old building such as 1850 that you want to do the um, more traditional style the way proprietors has done. Um, in, in fact, in front of the post office downtown, the railing there is, is a good job too. Okay. But uh, this to me just looks like yeah. two leaves spliced together. That's, that's not what we want. No, but I bring that up because there was no detail on the plans. Any issue, Matt, as far as you know, with the flat railing in terms of code requirement? No, it actually, the grasp ability uh, should work. And I, we actually, I think, I'm pretty sure, I don't know if that railing was uh, original. I want to say that it may have been installed. I forget because it'd be hard to forget that project. Um, but uh, we would, we anticipated using a similar detail. Uh, Lucy, and we actually, believe it or not, um, also did the same detail at 28 Easy Street. Um, for Robert Young's building. Oh, okay. um, they have that kind of wraparound stair and uh, we actually have two wrought iron railings. And, and again, same thing, they, they do tend to just kind of disappear and they're not you know big and bulky. When you start to get into the wood four by fours and the caps, your eye just tends to go to it. So we had, we had anticipated using a similar style to the one on proprietors. Good, thank, Good, you. thank you. 
Mm -hmm. All right, I'm, I'm convinced. So um, I, it's kind of sounding like, at least in terms of the deck and the railing, we have no concerns. Are there other window things going on that we want to look at? Um, just mentally, I thought it was just that front stoop, but it sounds like there's a couple of smaller details on the side elevation uh, of removing the window and adding a door, uh, but I'm not totally sure about that, which it should be. It's cloudy. Wow. Yeah, the note, I think it says shift the window. And then we did, well, the other part was we did extend, um, we did have a stair going down to the backside of the property, but there was just no need for it. It was becoming cumbersome and it actually posed some other, I think, construction issues. So we just eliminated the stair. I think as far as that door is concerned, I think we always, uh, I think we're switching out a window for a door. It's an exit door, it's an egress door. Um, and just a bigger picture, which I think you've seen before, there was plans for uh, you know, a two-story addition uh, but we've kind of eliminated that. And I think that that, that addition of that door was a requirement uh, for the for the egress uh, capacity. And then I guess we've got skirting over there. Oh, uh, yeah, I think just when we've, I think there was, we added a couple of treads. I think that initially in our previous approval, it may have shown a few smaller treads, like I think two or three treads. And I think given the slope of that area, we have to come down a little bit further. Okay, I'm getting the feeling that this is one that we have no concerns about. Um, anybody have any concerns on this? Um, just a couple of quick questions. Um, you know, with the with the stair uh, that you're you're not doing anymore, obviously uh, because you don't need it. Um, is there a reason why that uh, area has to go out that far to the to the right of the door? I think it's the turning radius for there, there's actually a, a ramp between the two buildings. The sec, the first floor elevations don't quite line up. The Roberts house uh, is uh, taller. Oh, is this a section through the deck? Uh, it's actually, yes, I think it is. It's actually, it shows the stairs, so. I, I, I got it. Um, and um, well, as bummed as I am to lose that really awesome big two over two window, um, I guess, can people just walk over the sill? <laughs> yeah, right. I, you know, if the building inspector would, would agree with it, I'd be fine with it. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, I think it leads right out to, from a uh, egress stair. So the good news is we're able to keep most, like pretty much the entire second, third floor and a lot of this back stair, uh, the original stairs are all staying intact. Um, so uh, it's kind of a matter of like where pre in the previous iteration it came out and led to a, a secondary a vestibule and this way it just comes out of the base of the stairs I uh, as i recall i like the idea of keeping the window as well the i mean it, as far as jumping out a, a window i can't imagine up an easier or better window to jump out of than one that's you know, 20 inches from the floor <laughs> true, true but i think it is required for the egress is you're, you guys are raising concerns about the window. Is that something you really want to make a comment on or are you okay with this? I, I understand the bigger picture. I'll, I mean, could it go into, what is that uh, that room to the left of the door? The luggage room? Yeah. I mean, could you, could you put it over there and then block it off from the inside? Uh, I know these are fussy things, dude, but like... Uh, no, no. No worries. I'm getting a text from uh, the the project manager who's working on it, Josh. He said uh, uh, all meaning code egress sprinkler requirements. Um, so I'd have to I'd have to look at it and see if there's a way to um, you know navigate that or, or alter it. But yeah, I mean, if it went I to the it. and it was just a blackout window, I mean. It, it, it's just a really cool window. It's unique. Mm. Building. I think if you go down one more plan, that might, or, or up, I should say. Yeah. Mm. Can you see the luggage room right there? Yeah. Brooke, I can put a comment in the, in our notes saying, would 
appreciate seeing a reuse well, of that window. You know, you know, one thing we could do potentially is put the window in the, were you saying put the window in the luggage room? Yes. Yeah, we, we could try that. Yeah, and just put a blackout, blackout on the back of it, you know, that way. You even if it's, even if you saw inside the shelf, it's just, uh, that, that luggage room is pretty critical because of the check-in area for all four buildings. So I, I, yeah, we could certainly, yeah, I could do that. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. <laughs> That'd be really That'd cool. actually be good for natural light in the luggage room too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Matt. You got it. I think we're good with this one. And then one Cambridge Street. Point of order, could I ask a question? Yeah. Mickey, thank you. Yeah, hi, Marty. Hi. Um, I'm, I'm tracking backwards. I understand that I came up before the board earlier today, and I don't know whether I can ask a question about what happened or um or did i miss it and i need to just move on with my day <laughs> hey Marty, i'm going to suggest that linda linda was there linda williams could you call her and talk to her about what what we talked about i can and i thank you very much for uh oh for cambridge street oh, okay yeah whatever You're, that's pretty simple to... pretty stuff simple stuff there but um you know, everything I'm doing is match existing, but um, I'm, thank you. I will call her and um, do I need to reach back to you guys? I'm in charge over there. You're talking about Pleasant Street, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I think, you know, you'll, you'll hear from Linda about our concerns. So um, I think we're looking for some revisions um, because the conditions don't quite meet what we sort of expected. So I hmm. think we can explain that to you. Okay, I'm more than happy to um, adjust anything needs to be done and thank you. All right, thank you, Marty. All right, everybody have a great day. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> back to Cambridge. So, okay. Matt, do you wanna say anything initially? I think I have a few things to say, sure. Um, so, uh, obviously, I don't know if everyone's familiar with this uh, building site. Um, the address has been a bit of a confusing, but uh, this is the technical address per the uh, the GIS. But um, it's the former chocolate shop. If you're all familiar with that, does everybody know where we are? Yeah, yeah, it's right yeah, okay, cool. the uh, post office. Yep, and um, and it actually the property is on the same uh, block as the um, Eric McKechnie's uh, T-shirt shop, uh, and so bigger picture, what are you know if you're familiar with the building, uh, the building's really in you know two parts, and I think maybe the site plan here would probably be or this floor plans would be most helpful. Um, you know, you've got two portions of the building. There's um, the brick portion of the building which dates uh, from 1870. And so our current plan is to really not touch that or we're not proposing any changes to that whatsoever. Although I think uh, we may come back uh, at some point to discuss, you know, we found his, you know, obviously there's a lot of historic photos uh, and the windows are, are not original. And one of our intentions would be for the, you know, the, the older portion of this uh, structure, the original portion is to try to restore it uh, as much as possible um, to its original condition, i.e., you know, window sash configuration. Uh, right now, there are two over twos, I believe, but the, the originals were six over six, sash color, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But as far as this proposal is concerned, and as far as the new ownership's proposals are concerned, uh, there is no intention to, you know, alter that existing historic, uh, significantly historic structure in any way other than you know, some potential window changes that would you know, restore it back to its original uh, condition. Uh, the dormers on that porch of the building were added uh, at a later date. They're not original. There are also two small chimneys that were um, demolished at some point in history. And the new owners are very much interested in returning uh, that portion of the structure back to its you know, whatever original 
condition, i.e., you know, maybe adding the chimneys back, definitely, um, you know, changing the windows out. But for this portion, we thought that, again, there's no intention to make any changes, immediate changes to it right now, uh, as far as, you know, going up or altering it in any way. We understand how important that structure is and uh, we respect it and, and have no intentions to make any significant alterations to it. Uh, so the other portion of the uh, footprint, um, looking, and we submitted a, a historic uh, um, package, which had pretty much all the available information that's out there in terms of photographs. I don't know if that's in this packet, uh, Holly, maybe further down. Uh, but anyways, there's some great photos of the building. Um, but the long and short of it is that the, uh, the portion that we're proposing to alter, um, some portions of it look based on the Sanborn maps date, I think between like 23 and 49, but they don't really, they've obviously been added on to. It's like one small portion looks like it, uh, it dates from that period, but clearly there's uh, been alterations, significant alterations to it. Um, and, you know, additions to the, to both sides of it and to the, to the second floor. Uh, so we basically tried to put together all the information that was available to us. And so feel free to go through it. This is a great shot. Um, the upper left-hand corner, uh, that's actually the gas light, uh, believe it or not on the left, uh, in the background and the, you know, the one story addition where the, uh, the theater is, is not there yet, uh, but you can't see, uh, uh, thank you Holly. And you can see those two chimneys that were there at one, one point. Um, directly below, it's a great shot. Uh, you can see those are six over six windows. Um, there are two or two is now. You can see if those two chimneys were there. Again, I've kind of talked with the ownership and they're, they're interested in restoring its you know, original condition to what extent uh, possible. And so I might be able to um, you know, uh, convince them to maybe even add these chimneys back, which I think they'd be open to. We didn't want to get into uh, any alterations to the exist to that portion of the building at this point, because obviously our focus is on the other part of the, the structure. Again, you can see those two dormers, those dormers, the, the, the rake detail, I feel like doesn't really fly. There's something odd about them, but they're there. Um, you know, we probably wouldn't want to remove them. I don't think you can do a whole lot with that second floor up there. It's pretty low, but uh, the thought of maybe adding the chimney back and maybe kind of playing around with the, uh, some sash colors and definitely considering restoring the old windows if we could. Uh, if you look at the north uh, elevation, that is the existing you know, condition, and that is the portion of the building that we're proposing to um, alter, add demo, you know, basically demo and add a uh, basically a second, third floor. Um, the idea is that uh, the first floor would be maintained as retail. Uh, and that we'd be adding a, um, an, a uh, basically a one, two bedroom apartment uh, above it. And um, so we can kind of scroll through that if you want. One thing that we did look at, uh, we did actually, there again, context is obviously important. You're all familiar with the site, but I do think these are helpful just to kind of, you know, look at and uh, see what we're dealing with in terms of immediate context. Um, we did include uh, SketchUp renderings and we did model the massing schematics of all of the buildings and the surroundings, just because I think that's important to kind of get the sense of context and relationship. Um, we just took any building that was in, in the area and thought that was relevant. So as far as the building is concerned, uh, we basically kept the, for the most part, the existing footprint um, and tried to maintain, you know, a couple important things. One is the uh, angled entry point uh, for the uh, for the entry to this uh, to the structure. We wanted to maintain that. There's obviously an existing bay. Um, and uh, there is also one thing we did try to do is integrate a one story element off the facade of the building uh, so that we maintained a level of, you know, one story scale, if you will. Now we've kind of wrapped that first floor retail area in, the, in glass. Uh, we've got, you know, some uh, pilasters pretty well detailed out. We do have a lot of exterior trim details and, um, but we didn't think at this, you know, at HTC, you typically don't see, you know, quarter scale trim details, but we have spent a lot of time in terms of, you know, detailing out the rakes, the primary uh, Eve, Gable and, and first floor elements, because we thought that was really important. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, trying to get uh, bedrooms on that third floor, you know, we worked really hard to try to, you know, keep the scale, the scale, you know, as low as possible. Um, we understand that we are going up. Uh, this building is under 30 feet, which I was very proud of only because, you know, we can, there are paths to being over 30 feet in the core district. 
the building, uh, the McKechnie's building next door is actually uh, 31 six, I believe. Um, so we're 18 inches lower than that structure. Um, we also integrated uh, this Dutch hip element, which I kind of liked. I thought it softened the edges of the building a bit, um, you know, because there is a certain level of, you know, verticality to it. I thought that these hipped, uh, you know, the, the, the Dutch hip actually kind of helped soften things a little bit and drop the scale down. Uh, that third floor is uh, pretty tight. There's not a lot of headroom. It's not a lot of great space up there, but it does give us uh, the ability to uh, get a, a bedroom and a bathroom uh, and a, another smaller kind of bunk room, uh, if you will. Again, we kept that bay on the left side, um, changed obviously some of the, the proportions of it and some of the detailing of it. Um, you know, went with the six over six windows. Um, and we can kind of keep scrolling down. I think you can kind of look at the, it's the original elevation. This is this, you know, side profile. I think this is helpful. You know, we did not want to violate the uh, proportions of the existing historic structure. Um, and so when you factor in the building footprint um, and, and the notion that we actually wanted to maintain this one story bay element on the first floor, uh, you know, obviously, we, you know, it kind of reduces our square footage on the upper floors. So uh, we've got a shed dormer on the backside. We do have this cricket, uh, you know, that forms between the two buildings. And we do have a recessed uh, deck area on, on this side. I did talk to the McKechnie's. That was something that they were concerned about is like kind of pushing that, that deck away. It is completely hidden, uh, but it is... Um, you know, it is something that I do think is important to have some like outdoor space if you can have it. Uh, let me just stop this, my phone's blown up. Um, I don't know if it's possible to go back to the uh, drawings and could just, you know, maybe focus in on some of the renderings we did because I thought those were helpful, helpful for me anyways. Um, just to get it, give a sense of perspective. And I think the opening uh, renderings, which we tied to uh, the cover sheet they do actually show um, the context of the other buildings, like the surrounding buildings. Um, we can uh, we can actually start on these if you like. I mean, these uh, what we try to demonstrate here is that there are existing trees on the site. Um, you know, and those will be part of the streetscape. The streetscape is really important. I, I personally think that when you're on this sidewalk and on the street, there's a lot of layers there. There's like urban layers. We, I use that term loosely because it's Nantucket, but truth is, on street parking. Uh, trees, you know, sidewalks, you know, I think that a building like this, when it is in place, it feels like it, it should feel like it's always been there. Um, so uh, I think that these street perspectives to me are, are fairly convincing. Um, anyways, I could go on and on about it, but we spent a lot of time on it. We studied it. Um, you know, the third floor is really kind of chopped up. If you look at the floor plan, you can see that there's not a ton of room up there. So we really made every effort to keep it as low as possible. I think that perspective on the, on the left side actually just shows the relationship of the two buildings. It is kind of a unique situation because you have this pre-existing condition of these two buildings that are actually share the same footprint, but clearly the brick side is this, you know, one story um, structure that, you know, obviously we've taken a completely hands-off approach and we want to work to restore it. Uh, but then the question is how do we handle this other portion of the building um, in, in a respectful way? So. Anyways, uh, I could go on and on, but I'll stop my comments there and I look forward to uh, comments from the board. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Matt. Um, so I have a couple comments myself. Um, you know, overall, I think you, I think this is an attractive, generally attractive building. I don't, you know, have any real, um, you know, I think you've, you've obviously spent a lot of time on it and I, and I you know, I'm, it's apart from some details, I get the, I get it, but you know, in general, I have a big problem with the height and the massing. <laughs> so I'm just gonna read a few comments I have and then we can go around. Um, so much of what is proposed to be demolished appears on the 1923 Sanborn map and all of it was built before 1949 as a, and it's a contributing structure. The existing additions to the original brick building are appropriately scaled additive masses and relate well to the other commercial structures within the vicinity, disregarding the newly built tall structure to the east, which replaced a modest one-story building. The proposed addition towers over and dominates the original brick structure, detracting from its historic value. 
The roof pitches 13 and 12 are excessively vertical and proportions of the main and the proportions of the main mass are tall and narrow, adding to the verticality. This would be a dramatic shift in the character of the historic streetscape in the wrong direction. Um, in terms of recommendations, I I'm saying any proposed changes to the property should respect the original brick building and stay within the predominantly story and a half range of the surrounding neighborhood. The applicant is simply attempting to add too much volume to this property. The HDC is not obligated to approve a major expansion and inappropriate change to the scale of this property. So, anybody else want to make any comments? I can, Mickey. It's Angus. Okay, Angus. Uh, I pretty much agree with what you're saying. Um, Right now, um, that one story addition where the candy store was or the chocolate store was, um, you almost felt like you needed to duck to get underneath that, that one story roof. Um, and I appreciate the thought that's gone into this design as far as um, having a one story uh, that you relate to uh, along India Street. Uh, but the the extra two stories above that, I, I feel like uh, any effort that was made to, for the, the one story were lost in the, in the two and third story additions. Um, the, the style, while uh, I think it's well designed, uh, is inappropriate for that particular location. I remember when they, um, the eight uh, Beach Street uh, or uh, Water Street, uh, happened that it really it, it really significantly for me changed the character of um, of this streetscape. Uh, it felt it felt uh, too high and too much um, going on with it. When you look at the the buildings um, in that area, anything that gets up into uh, anything above a story and a half or two stories, there just isn't anything going on with the roofs. It's they're just no dormers. Very simple. Um, uh, massing, and um, I feel like this is go taking, uh, going up with the massing, uh, maximizing the, the footprint, and um, and just going up as uh, you, know, you know pushing the limits of what zoning would uh, allow, and um, it just it, it feels a, it, at least a story too high. Um, so I. I would have a hard time um, with uh, um, seeing this as, as being appropriate. And I think your comments, Mickey, about the um, dwarfing of the historic structure to it. Um, I, I appreciate the, the ideas of bringing the two over twos back to six over sixes and maybe restoring the chimneys. The, the dormers, as Matt mentioned, are awkward on that, um, on that structure. Um, so those could, you know, come or go, but, but this really, um, this proposal looms over the brick building and um, I think a compromise is it. it, it would make that brick building feel sad, I think, um, uh, if, if this were built as proposed. That's all. Thanks, Angus. Um, Lucy or Brooke? I'll go. Um, again, it's a nice looking building. Um, and I know you've got a, a pretty tight lot. Uh, I definitely appreciate the one story uh, element. Uh, I do feel that just from a purely uh, um, presentation on the street um, angle, I, I, it does feel a little bit tall and overwhelming for the street. Um, I, you know, I think that a second floor um, would be plenty uh, for, for this building. Um, and, you know, even, even though it is tied to that brick building, you know, I, I see those as two separate structures. So um, I, I'm, I'm definitely looking at this building on its own. Um, so, you know, I know there's McKechnie's, but I think that was a bit of a that was a bit of a fluke, um, in my opinion, but um, 
but I think you can accomplish something similar, uh, maybe not with the third floor, uh, because I definitely feel like it, it looms on that side. So um, I'm in general agreement with Angus and Mickey. Lucy? Um, I'm in agreement with you all. Um, I consider the original building, the main mass, and um, by HDC guidelines, any um, additions should be less than the main mass. If you look at the um, existing north photo from India Street, but the secondary mass is same height as the original for those two dormers anyway, and getting to Eric McKechnie's, that is the whole building is, I think, a fluke and being too tall, but that is, um, it doesn't have any secondary mass on it. And I do agree that the addition to the it does need help. And some of the ideas in your drawings um, are a big improvement. However, doing the third floor for me, I, you know, I'm down there every single day. And I think that that is a very iconic um, corner there between the um, Athenaeum and the post office. And to have something looming there that doesn't that feels too massive, I think would be a shame. Thank you. Thanks, Lucy. You know, to Brooke's point, I believe um, regarding the two, it, it really is like two buildings and it's not unusual downtown to have two um, attached buildings that are essentially separate. So in terms of the additive massing, I was thinking similarly to what Lucy just said that, that you know for additive massing, you know it should be subordinate. Um, I can I can see somewhat of an argument perhaps that maybe these these could read as independent structures even though they're really the same property, but but I think we're all saying at least in agreement that that the third floor is really a stretch, and it's it's it, you know for that location for that neighborhood. It's a lot, and it's really, really feels tall and thin. Um, so I think we there may be some movement for a story and a half or second floor, but I can't imagine being in favor of a third floor in this location. Yeah. So um, anybody else want to make any comments here? Matt, you're, you're sorry about that. I'm muted. Uh, yeah, no, I, we understood. I mean, like I said, it's, um, you know, we worked really hard to first, we thought, you know, keeping it under 30 feet was great because, you know, anytime, I mean, just by nature of the building, it, it's going to look vertical, but, uh, and that's why we wanted to include some of these context, you know, renderings, but I think that, um, you know, your feedback is, is helpful. And I do think, you know, the notion that there's some work that we can do to the existing brick structure, that being the oldest, uh, would be uh, would be helpful as well. So, anyways, we'll um, we'll kind of move forward with the process and, and see how it goes. But uh, I will think of uh, ways to take your comments and see if we can't integrate them um, to help uh, address some of your comments. Because I'm, I'm guessing that part of the board will share some of them as well. But regardless, uh, feedbacks appreciated. Uh, I appreciate it, and uh, we'll start kind of seeing what we have for options. I got one more comment, quick. Um, when when I was Mickey, um, when I was talking about the two seven stru structures, I was thinking of uh, like the sweet shop and then the buildings next to that. That's kind of what I was thinking of when we had two separate structures that are they stand alone, but they are tied to each other. And uh, that's the that's um, the other thing though was that I think that you could probably make this building a little bit wider without even cutting into the roof of the um, of the brick building, you know, even just scooting it, scooting that wall towards the uh, um, uh, towards the south, uh, you know, you don't even have to cut into it. You could um, create maybe even a, a floor cantilever because it looks like the floor is up above 
that roof line. So it might be possible, I think, to make that that uh, the plates, you know, and the and the second floor spread out a little bit, and you know, maybe bring the ridge down. You know, just I think well, there's a little bit of finesse that could happen there. One one thing, if I could, that did come up was the notion. I mean, what I try to basically do is take a completely hands off approach of the other building. But one of the comments, because I did kind of show it to a couple of different people, and you know, what do you think? And and uh, obviously, like the just the footprint of that existing building, the the front portion that's not the significantly historic st structure, is linear. And so there is a possibility to do kind of an intersecting, you know, gable or mass that doesn't compromise the first floor, but might add to the you know, to kind of uh, less of a linear footprint. Uh, so that was something we talked about and there might be a way for us to potentially. Yeah, and maybe it's, the program maybe it's not, I don't know. I yeah, I, I could look at that. I mean, I, I, and I, the more I thought about it, I like, well, that would definitely help in terms of rounding out the building a bit. And maybe we can take some of that program. Cause again, it is not, if you look at that third floor, I mean, you know, Mickey and Brooke, it's, it, it ain't pretty as it is. So, um, you know, if I could, uh, you know, maybe take some of that and, and add it to the, to the second floor and kind of drop the scale and, and still maintain, it might be, might even be better square footage, you know, so, but I'll definitely look at that. I, I, I might, one second, Lucy, I'll get back to you. On that, on that note, Brooke's comment about maybe, it sounds like you're saying overlap the new building onto the top yeah. of the brick. I'm not sure I'm going to be in favor of that. I think that that sort of, to me, starts to violate the brick building. I, I mean, I can see the, I can see these as almost independent properties or structures because there's a line there and it's not encroaching onto the roof of the brick building. But if we were to start overlapping onto that roof, then I would start thinking about, is this good additive massing? And I don't think it would be. Okay. Yeah. I, I, that was my starting point, Mickey. And I, the one thing I would say is uh, the thought is like where that second floor flat deck is, mm -hmm. um, Maybe something is 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 maybe even small and as subtle. I don't know. I, I I can look at like I understand. I definitely don't want to um, have it read as if it's like on top of the building. But there might be a way. I, I'll certainly look at. It. I I share. I sh definitely shared your concern initially, and that's why we didn't really project on over it. But like in the, the weeks leading up to the submission, uh, somebody had mentioned that I was like, well, geez, you know, maybe if it was just some small additive piece that went out over just that deck. So it's still, um, it's not kind of completely on top of the, the other structure. So I, I'll, I can certainly look at it and I'm sure I'll be back uh, before you all, but I, uh, I certainly appreciate your perspectives, your expertise and in, in your, your time. But I, I think Lucy, you had something too, sorry. Yeah, I would, I would like to, when you come back and I would like to see this back, is that the, your street view renderings mm -hmm. if all included the third floor. Sure. Because I think one, three, and four do not include the third floor. Yeah, I mean, the so what we try to do is um, there's basically three sets of those renderings, the and they kind of go sequentially from macro to micro. And the thought was to show, you know, the aerials to show that, you know, that you're never going to really, people will never have that perspective, but I think just to kind of cognitively understand the scale of the building. Uh, and then the second round, which are in the elevations, are... Uh, from street level, but far enough back where you are seeing the building in its entirety. And then yeah. the third round, the third sheet was just to, intended to show you, okay, I'm walking down the sidewalk and what is that streetscape? You know, that, cause that is what you see, you know, every time we walk down the street, any street on Nantucket, especially in the court district, we're not really seeing the tops of, we're not really even seeing a second or third floor. We're just seeing, yeah, those, these are the ones where we tried to, Lucy, we tried to show the whole thing. So I didn't want to, you know, uh, you know, but I did want to show you that that third set because that does show you some of the detail of the building, the scale of the building. Um, and I think again, I, from a you know downtown commercial retail perspective, I think it could it feel would feel contextual. But I think we're we're mainly talking, uh, you know, that the, the, the verticality in the third floor. So these are the ones I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, and I intentionally showed. I wanted to get that street perspective, um, and some of them are do capture the upper floors. But I, but I hear you. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you got the message. Thanks, Matt. Yep. Thank you. All righty. Um, yeah. So we'll see that one back, Mickey. Can we ask for that? I'm sure we, yeah, definitely will want Thanks. it. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, 
seven chair. new streets been withdrawn, right? Uh, seven new street will be back before you. The uh, agent asked to withdraw it before it moves forward to, to change some things. So instead of having to review it and then it go back, and anyway, so it'll be back. All three of okay. those applications. And the hardscaping is going to be a separate application on that. For which one? This one? For new street. I... Oh, yeah. The fire pit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I would think so. Right. Yep. Okay. Um, so I think we're done with the applications. There's a couple comments that I also wanted to make, just sort of procedural questions. Okay. Um, yeah, we've um, sort of had conversations about the, the meetings during the HDC and thinking about, you know, should one of us be representing our, our comments at the HDC? Um, no, no discredit to you, Holly. You do a good job, and I'm, I'm just saying that first of all, this might alleviate some work for you, but mm -hmm. also um, make have us present in case they have questions for us um, yep. that, that might come up. So, um, I, I, I've always felt that it would be beneficial for one of us to attend a meeting, um, but it's a lot to ask of one person to attend all these HDC meetings plus the HSAB meetings in Wisconsin. Yep. And all those things. So I'm just wondering if if we can possibly as a group perhaps share the load and um, take turns attending HDC meetings. Um, and we have to just make a decision weekly as to who's available to do those meetings. How does everybody as a group feel about that? Um, well, right now, I mean, some of the meetings are five hours long. I know. I, I think ideally, if it were possible, if they could cluster our applications at the beginning of the meeting, um, I'm not sure how, how agreeable that will be to them. When you're dealing with 150 to 200 applications, uh, yeah. It's, I'm it's, not gonna ask um, Kathy. She does a wonderful, excruciating mm -hmm. job of making sure every PDF goes here, there, and everywhere. Um, I, I can't, I can't request that of her. I can't. Yeah. Um, and quite frankly, that this is the reason why even on Thursdays, as you notice, we have a, an hour and a half Thursday meeting. Sometimes it can go a little bit over, but usually there's a hard stop because there's another regulatory board, like the board of health that need to come in. Um, you, you'll, you'll see me there. Um, I think I've missed two um, Thursday meetings uh, because the fact that they were historic structures or sconset historic structures applications um, on that agenda. Um, sometimes, you know, that there could only be a couple. Sometimes I'm, I'll sit here and eh, they're only gonna get so far and lo and behold, they go through it. And so it's it's really hard to to discern that. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally understand. And I didn't really expect to the HDC to rearrange their schedule for us. How about um, Mickey, you do a great job with these comments. And I really appreciate the way you send them out and then we can add to them if we wish. But if we, or if your comments are read by Holly, as she does, that it's treated almost as a checklist. And what I mean was that I, I did listen to an HDC meeting for about four hours a few weeks ago and I noticed that our comments were read and then the discussion would start and it would go off on a tangent. And then some of the comments that you had made weren't quite addressed. Um, and it's understandable because of the long agenda, but if Holly could say, well, Mr. Chair, Ray, can you please, um, how how is the HDC um, feel about the purple front door or something like that? So our comments, they are all of them are addressed, and that would get us off the hook. Um, I think that would be helpful. I don't know how Holly feels about that. I guess it's sort of a matter of keeping track of the conversation and just just thinking 
to yourself, did they did they completely forget a topic that we were that was important to us? Um, there are times, as you've probably seen, where I remind them on comments. Um, I will tell you too that the the chair does a fantastic job of um, picking out the comments that HSAB or Sconset Advisory provides, um, and he will say, "I agree with HSAB," or "I agree with." Mm -hmm. So, I would suggest if if you you all feel strongly about changing the way we've been handling it with the addition of your um, because I literally I print out your stuff every time, and I can I consult with my comments that I've been writing down while you all speak, as well as as you know staff I have my own I attach it to it, um, and I make sure literally I have your page I, I have one page for each application that you all provide comments on, and I put it attached so I make sure at the meeting I'm reading the historical information on that particular structure and my comments and then your comments in general and I do think your recommendations versus just comments is very helpful. I saw that very, very helpful. Um, I would recommend if, if, if you're wanting to change the way we've been doing it, that um, as Chair Mickey, that you would have that request straight to the chair of the HDC. Um, I think that would be beneficial versus me just saying, you know, they, they would like to do this change. Um, however, again, I can continue doing what we have been doing. Um, because like you mentioned, these are five hour meetings just about um, the, the, on, on, you know, for instance, if we had HTC this evening, I would be sitting in my chair continually till nine o'clock tonight. Um, so mm -hmm. it's, it is a lot. Um, and I would hate to um, have one of you all at a meeting. If you don't have to be, I know Brooke sometimes is there with us to the <laughs> wee hours, but you've got a lot, your own stuff. So, yeah, I, I mean, it is what it is. And, um, you know, I try to get the information out there and, and not to discredit what you all provide, all the advisory boards and, I, and, and myself, you know, we, we give a service to the, to this whole process. Um, you know, at the end of the day, there is no regulatory um, responsibility with, with you all as advisors to this process. So it's, it's more or less, um, this was created out of a, a um, a concern, I think, and, and, a, and a, um, a need. It definitely need is there, and I advocate for you all as advocates quite a bit, um, because quite frankly, I think your review and your input and your time is beneficial for me to be able to do my review as well. It, it goes, I think, hand in hand. So I thank you. Okay, um, Brooke, were you, yeah, Brooke. yeah. So um, I don't know when. Well, I, Angus, maybe you, Lucy, you watched the four hours of meetings, and uh, Mickey, it's been a while. I think that since you've dropped in on a meeting, um, it's. Um, what Holly is doing is, you know, at, at the head of, head of the meetings and at, ahead of each application is extraordinary. Same with Kathy, um, and with Ray. Um, it's very. It can be very tangential. Uh, during, during the discussions, and um, I think that trying to, con you know, like occasionally you'll get a, uh, a commissioner who will pick up on a theme from the HSAB, and that will become, uh, you know, what they stick to, and they'll all kind of circle around it, and that's good. But um, you know, just as just as often, someone will just go off on a complete tangent, and it, it becomes a completely different uh, storyline, and um, you know if. It comes down to whether or not uh, you know Ray is actually able to pull people back in line. So it's a very dynamic process, and um, you know sometimes you can redirect them, and sometimes you can't. And uh, um, I, I think that in terms of having somebody there, um, you know, I, I don't know that I don't know that uh, they would lean on you unless that person just spoke up and said, "Hey, you know, uh, what about this?" Um, but that would mean a lot of time being spent by somebody uh, at these meetings. And um, I wouldn't, I don't know. I mean, I've spent enough time there as it is and I, I wouldn't want to spend any more than I have to. <laughs> it's brutal. It is. I mean, I, I only made it through about four hours and that just, and I, I personally, I find it a little bit frustrating that um, applications that I didn't feel that were 
thorough enough and then long explanations had to be made. Whereas, you know, it, if, it, if the application had been more thorough, a lot of time would have been saved. All right, Lucas, you must have something to say. Um, <laughs> I, I like your idea. I've thought about attending um, meetings for uh, years uh, in that capacity that you're describing. Um, I, I feel like uh, for Holly, it's a lot to juggle. Um, just the technical aspect of the meeting and her comments and our comments and, uh, and the dynamics of everything in the meeting. So I, I like the idea of um, supporting, supporting her and supporting our, um, our concerns at the meeting. Um, it is a huge ask for any one person to do it. I would certainly be willing to do my share of it. Um, I'm, I'm at the meeting sometimes, but I'm not there all the time. Um, it is frustrating to sometimes watch the meeting, uh, meetings. I'm not saying it happens all the time, but, but enough times for it to be a concern that I feel like our concerns uh, or recommendations aren't, um, aren't, aren't being, um, seen or, or, or recognized or um, addressed. So um, I, I, uh, I, th I think Holly's suggestion of you communicating with, uh, with Ray uh, makes sense to see uh, what, what, what they're amenable to. Yeah. I, I'm, you know, we've just started, we've changed up our comments to have this sort of concerns and recommendations. And it's only been a couple of days or meetings that we've done that. I, I might suggest that we um, monitor the meetings as best we can. We can always go back and look at the YouTube um, you know, channel later on to see how it goes. I've done that a few times. So why don't we just see, sit on it for a week or two, see how it looks, see how they're handling the concerns and recommendations, and then come back to this topic in a couple of weeks. Okay. And I will add, um, sometimes they're not getting to those applications until, uh, you know, another week or two. Yeah. So just to bear that in mind as well, I have a stack, <laughs> a stack with everybody's comments in the order that, because that, that's another thing. Those applications are put on the agenda in the order that they're received, the order that they're signed up. And that's for new business versus old business and all. That's why you look at the agenda. It's like, oh my gosh. So it is a lot, um, and so it's you won't necessarily hear these comments for these new applications that you saw today, this week. It's probably going to be maybe next week in the you know on a Thursday, not next week Monday or Tuesday. So well, are, are are you have you did you say that you are not, aren't always to, able to attend Thursday meetings? That's very few and far between. I say that there's been a couple of Thursdays um, where I did miss um, and I provided comments to Kadeem from you all or Sconset. Um, and you know that has had its pros and cons. It's usually because I have another town staff wide meeting that I have to go to or some sort, um, but it, it is few and far between. I try to schedule those around those as much as possible. Well, considering that Thursdays are a pretty short meeting, if, if you, can anticipate that you will not be able to attend a Thursday meeting. Could you let me or us know, and maybe sure. one of us could substitute for you? Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. That might be a good way to sort of test this out too. Yep. Um, so, all right, let's 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 table that for now. Let's keep an eye on it and see how it's going and come back to it. Um, on that note, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to remind everybody, if you haven't had a chance to look at our Resilient Nantucket Design Guidelines, I'd like to make sure that any comments are provided to our consultant by today. He's working on the final draft with everybody's comments um, and hopes to get it, I think, to the town by Friday, I think, this Friday coming up. So we'll have um, another new set of revisions, I hopefully the final, with everybody's comments in there. And... Um, yeah, I'm very, I'm very excited about this project. Good, it's a good one. All right, anybody else have any comments? Seeing none, nope. motion for adjournment. So moved. Um, 
Oh, you, the comments. Yep. <laughs> I'll um, make a motion to accept the comments. <laughs> Second to that. Tracy Second. Seconded. All those in favor? Lucy? Aye. Brooke? Angus? Aye. Aye. I'm in favor. So motion. To motion adjourn. to adjourn. Seconded by Lucy. I'll, um, all those in favor, Lucy. Aye. And Angus. Aye. 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 Great. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Holly. Thank Thanks, you. Holly. Thanks, Thanks Mickey. Holly.